Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, we'll do the Airbus A320 procedures. We'll do the pushback engine start, taxi in the airplane, take off and initial climb. We're going to continue exactly where we left off the video of the Airbus A320 cockpit preparation. If you haven't watched it, go and watch it. I'll leave the link in the description below. So to spice it up on this video, I have added some weather and also I have a pilot monitoring with me. We will run the pilot monitoring flows and the checklist. So it's going to be exactly like in real life. So let's get started. All right, so here we are, we're in the flight deck. The cockpit is set, the doors are still open. All we're gonna do is make sure that the ground power is disconnected. The parking brake is set so we can remove the chokes and the cones. Close the door, disconnect the bridge, connect the tug, and ask for a pushback clearance. Request push and start clearance. Ground. Three, two, one. Requesting pushback and start clearance. Okay, clear to push and start. Three, two, one. Okay, we'll turn the beacon to on. Make sure that both windows are closed. Doors are closed as well. All we need is the slide to be armed and they're getting armed and they are being armed now. Thrust lever is to idle, park and break is set and pressure is checked. And now we can ask for a before start checklist. Before start checklist. Parking brake. Set. Take off speeds and thrust. Set and check. Windows. Close. Beacon. On. Before start checklist completed. All right, at this stage, we'll speak to the ground crew. We'll ask them to start the pushback as we have the clearings and they would ask us to raise the parking brake, so that's exactly what we will do. We'll put the parking brake to off and ask them to commence the pushback in which direction we were clear to. But make sure that the nose via steering disconnect message is displayed here, otherwise you cannot start the engines and you cannot start the engines during the pushback. Otherwise you would have to wait for the pushback to be finished and then you start the engines. So let's see if it turns on. It should be on as they start the pushback, but probably for a sim glitch it will turn on in a bit. All right, start the pushback. All right, we're pushing back. The nose wheel steering disconnect message is here so we can start the engines. Okay, we'll put the engine mode selector to ignition. Start an engine number two. Okay. Start an engine number two. As you can see, the pressure is 38 PSI and then we are gonna have an igniter A or B. All right, the igniter B is on and N2 is increasing. Soon you're going to see the oil pressure is going to increase and EGT and N1. Oil pressure is increasing, EGT and N1 are increasing. Once the engine is started, we will have available message here on the N1 indicator. And the same procedure is going to go for engine number one. As you can see, this is an automatic start. It's completely monitored by the FADEC. If there's any problem, he will handle it. So there is nothing to worry about. So I just have to make sure that we're pushing in the right direction. I have to do the pushback and the engine start. So let's see, the engine two is available. Start in engine number one. Okay. Start in one. We go back to our engine number one. So the same procedure is gonna be happening in the same sequence for engine number one as it happened for engine number two. Once the engines are started, I will start my flow, after start flow, and that will start with the uh, engine mode selector going to normal. That will trigger the pilot monitoring to start his sequence as well. All right, now that the engines are started, we will start the after start flow. Engine mode selector is going to normal, and we will go on the overhead panel, APU bleeds off, NTIs not required, APU is off. And that will trigger the pilot monitoring to do the following sequence. I will do it manually, usually the pilot monitoring will do it. The AI that I have here today will do it, but I will just do the sequence to make sure that you can see exactly what it is. Arm the, sp the speed brakes, reset the rudder trim, set the flaps to the takeoff flaps setting, which is flaps two for today. And you set the um, pitch trim to the one that you have calculated for the takeoff. And then you go to the status. If there is a status message here, then you press the status, otherwise the status is normal. And at this stage, you ask for after start checklist. After start checklist. Anti-ice. Off. Ecam status. 
Checked. Pitch trim. 28% set. Rudder trim. Neutral. After start checklist completed. All right, at this stage, you make sure that the pin has been disconnected and showed to you by the ground crew. After that, we'll ask for the taxi clearance, but I will do the flight controls first and then I'll ask for taxi clearance to reduce my workload. Flight control check. Ready. Full up. Full down. Neutral. Full left. Full right. Neutral. Rudder. Full left. Full right. Neutral. All right, now he's gonna do his side and from there we'll start the taxi. You can see he's doing the same sequence except for the rudder. All right, he's finished his flight control check. We'll ask for taxi clearance. Request taxi clearance. Ground, good morning. Three, two, one, ready to taxi. Clear to taxi. Three, two, one. So, clear left side. Clear right side. All right. We'll put some lights, taxi light and runway turn off. And here we go. Parking brake is off. All right, as we start taxiing, we'll do a brake check. Brake check. Pressure zero. As you saw the pilot monitoring, he did his uh, taxi flow, which consisted of arming the auto brake to max, making sure that the squawk is set, where the radar is on and predicting, predicting which your system is to set to auto and pressing the takeoff config button. All right, as we are approaching the runway, let's do the taxi checklist. Taxi checklist. Flight controls. Checked. Checked. Flap setting. Config 2. Config 2. Radar and predictive wind shear system. On auto. Engine mode selector. Normal. Ecam memo. Take off, no blue. Taxi checklist completed. Request departure clearance. Tower, 3, 2, 1, ready for departure. Cleared for departure. Three, two, one. Clear left side. Clear right side. All right. I'm gonna put some lights. Clear for departure or clear for takeoff. Okay. Lineup checklist. Take off runway. Runway three zero right confirm. Take off runway confirm. Approach path clear of traffic. Cabin crew be seated for takeoff. Checked. TCAS. TARA. PAX 1 and 2. On. Lineup checklist completed. Ready? Ready. All right, so we are lined up. Everything is done. I can see there is the weather head, but I don't see it on the radar. But I'm going to assume that the radar is not working <laughs> because this weather obviously is very it's a big build-up and i'm gonna assume it's the same problem because you don't want to take off into that i will show you show you the external view yeah so it's exactly this you really don't want to take off in that all right the weather has cleared now and we can start our takeoff takeoff check Mantoga SRS runway of the thrust blue. Checked. Thrust set. One hundred knots. Checked. V one. Rotate. Positive climb. Gear up. Gear up. All right, the gear has been selected to up and we're climbing. Now the next thing is we will wait for the thrust reduction, altitude and acceleration. 
So we have lever climb is flashing and we have climb out blue. So we'll select lever climb. All right, we have first climb, climb and nav and we're approaching 4000. We're gonna climb to flight level 150. 15000 blue. So our next speed constraint is 190 and then 220. All right, as we're doing the turn, we're gonna assume that we don't have any speed constraint. We will pull the speed and accelerate to 250 knots. Flaps one. Speed checked. Flaps one. Flaps zero. Speed checked. Flaps zero. All right, he's retracting the flaps and then he will disarm the speed brakes and set the lights to off. All right, we're climbing to flight level 150. The transition up to this 13000. So everything has been done. The flaps were selected to zero park. Uh, landing gear is up and speed brake disarm lights are off. So the next thing is approaching the transition up to it will set standard. Now we can manage the speed as we don't have any constraints anymore. Speed managed and we passed 10,000 feet, which requires the landing lights to go to off. Seat belts, we can select it to off as well as the weather is good. And no memos. The speed is increasing to 300. Optimum is optimum is 350, and we're climbing 350. Rec max is 381. So everything is good. All right, we're approaching the transition. The standard is set, and we set it here as well on the ISIS. And we're climbing flight level 150. Our final level is 350. We'll set it here as we were cleared for that level. And we can read on the FMA flight level 350 blue. All right, as we're climbing to flight level 350, the next thing we have to do is probably just change a frequency at the FIR boundary, come up with some plans in case of engine failure or emergency descent if there is any terrain. But where we're flying, we're over water, so the terrain is not an issue. So the next thing is reaching flight level 350 and coming up with some plans, like if we have to divert, where do we go? And so that will consist of updating the weather and checking the airports to make sure which one is suitable in case we have to divert. And that includes our video. On the next one, we will do the descent preparation, the landing, after landing procedures, and then to reach the parking and execute the parking checklist. I really, guys, hope that you like this kind of videos. They're very beneficial if you're doing the type rating or if you just want to expand your knowledge, refresh your memory, um, as I'm doing here, I haven't flown the Airbus 320 in five years or more now. So I like doing this kind of videos to keep my memory updated. I hope to see you on the next one. Until then, stay safe and take care.